friends. I wanted to, I wanted to get the camera back so I can wave. I'm having so much fun connecting with you guys. Let's paint a simple landscape with clouds, a little field or some grass, and maybe a tree in the back way off in the distance because I just posted a week or so ago how to paint clouds video. And I'm hoping that video helps take some of the fear out of painting clouds and makes it easier and more fun for you. Oh, and let's do it on a Michaels 6x8 canvas board. It's gessoed on the side. These are really inexpensive, great to practice practice on or you can frame them. There's just what the back looks like. Okay, let's get started. All right, so I've got my little T-square. These are the handiest things. I don't know where I got it. And then my Michaels canvas board, as I mentioned. I wrote six by eight on there so I could remember the size. <laughs> and then I've got a piece of cardboard down here to help keep me on camera. That's what the tape here is for too. Real high tech stuff. Okay, so a good rule of thumb is to put your horizon line on a third. And then, okay, well, how do you divide eight by three? Eh, half is four. So do we want it about the three inch mark? Or maybe... We could go, we want more sky. It's gonna be a sky painting. We could go three and a half. I'm just kind of looking to see how that looks. There isn't a right or a wrong. We're making this up as we go. It may be a fail, and then this could be like an epic fail YouTube video. <laughs> you know, there's lots of options here. Okay, I guess I went with three and three quarters in case somebody wants to know. And this is just a charcoal general's pencil. So I have a line and then I was thinking, oh, I don't have my blue out. I was thinking of using, maybe doing like a, oh, dry grass field of some sort. So I like the Naples yellow because it's already muted. Um, you could use a yellow you have, um, mute it down with a little, oh, put a little purple in it to mute it down. You put a little gray or black in it, a little brown. I have some burnt umber out. I don't know if we'll need it. And then I think we'll do Prussian blue. It's a muted blue too, so that's kind of nice. Or you can take any blue you have, mute it down with a little black, a little gray, a little white. And I also have some unbleached titanium. Don't know if we'll need that. So let's do the sky first. And I really like Liquitex here before I take that off, which I've mentioned in a couple other videos because you can store them standing on their caps and then the paint stays down towards the end. I really like that. I just have them um, sitting on a shelf, standing on a shelf. And this one's about empty. Oh, a tip I haven't mentioned in quite a while. This is a dirty cap, but you keep a couple of caps that are washed out and clean on hand in case one just gets so ruined or something and you could just put a fresh cap on this. Doesn't happen very often, but just in case. And then I'm gonna put another little blob out. Oh, and then I wiped the top of the cap. Here, tried to, hard to get everything on camera. I wipe it on a paper towel, clean it off to try and keep this from happening. <laughs> Sometimes I don't remember. Okay. So we probably need some white. Oh, I'll be right back. The white's at my other easel. So I got my white and I thought I'd show you. I buy um, the basics in bigger containers because I go through a lot of it. This one's just about empty. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see that there isn't much paint in there. And then this one's even neater because I could set that one on its lid too. Gotta love that. Okay. You know what, I do this a lot. I like neutral gray five. I'm gonna put a little in there to mute that blue down. Maybe we want a pile too. Oh, did you hear my cat meow? She's not happy. 
And we gotta write the word love because it's a great way to start. Put good vibes, put good art vibes into our painting. Uh, these are watercolor pencils from Michaels. Um, I love Michaels. You guys go use what you have. You can use chalk. Um, you don't have to write anything on the canvas. You guys do what you want to do. Boy, I wasn't set up. I thought I was set up here. This is a flat brush. Um, it was a, it, it is a Simply Simmons. It's a flat shader. I don't know what the number is because it's. I left it in the water and then the, the wood swell swelled up a little bit and made the paint pop off. And I've got a jar of water here. It just looks like this. It's a fairly big mason jar. I have two of them. One, you know, so sort of extra clean water and one that gets a little bit dirty over time. What else do we need? I think we should just start with the sky. I'm setting up my water. Oh, how about a palette knife? So you can mix it with your brush. Um, sometimes it's nice not to load your brush up with all this paint when you're mixing it, because that's a pretty big, that's way bigger blob than we're gonna need. I'm sort of like a chef that you dump in so much. Oh, oh, I know what a better example is. So if you make a powdered sugar frosting, you know, if you dump in too much milk, then you gotta add more powdered sugar. <laughs> because it, it got way too runny on you. I'm a little bit like that with my paint. But I do like... sort of the muted blue, even though the Prussian blue is already muted. I wonder if we want even a little more. I don't know, I'm just kind of whatever I feel like. There's no rhyme or reason here. You guys can do whatever you feel like too. I'm gonna end up grabbing most of that gray. And you don't have, you can mix your puddles as um, evenly, completely as you like, or leave them streaky. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my palette knife. So as I mentioned in my cloud, I got my brush just a little bit wet. I don't know if you can see, it's just a little bit wet. Um, so in my cloud video, I talked about how the sky is bluer. Sorry, I'm fighting a little bit with my water container there. Is that better? And then I'm gonna pick this up because I wanna get the edge. Um, the sky is usually bluer at the top. I need a little more water and gets lighter and grayer as you go down. And then if you watch just the beginning of that video, you can just do a really simple brush stroke back and forth and those can be your clouds. You don't have to paint puffy white clouds or storm clouds or whatever it is you might be going for. You can just keep it really simple. I think we're gonna paint some puffy clouds. Make sure I'm on camera. Grabbed a little white there, which may have been too soon. So it's springtime here in Omaha, Nebraska, um, but it's still kind of dry. My paint's still kind of dragging. That's when I don't like quite how it feels. I just dip maybe the corner of my brush in some water, and there you can see it flows off a little better. Grab some of that grayer since I mixed it. Ooh, and that's dark. But that's okay. So you can see, I already kind of have clouds there. And I tend to, so we're gonna do sort of a one point perspective, which sounds fancy, but we're gonna have kind of the clouds coming down towards the middle, or at least our eye being directed there. And we'll, I think we'll have a tree. And then I think we'll have our landscape. So you could make a dot um, for reference, but I don't think you'll need it. One point perspective is just a fancy way of saying we're gonna have everything kind of come to one place, or I will be drawn to one place in the painting. So 
See, this is probably the most fun part for me. Um, I'm also getting quieter, so you can tell I'm thinking. <laughs> um, it's just, look how pretty that looks. I love, love smearing the paint. And you don't have to pick it up like I am. I just want to grab my sides. What I think I'm going to do too is stop here pretty soon and dry it with a hair dryer so I can hold it on the other, on the wet side. Let's see how we look here. Oh, I don't know. You guys probably can't hear it, but there's a cardinal singing away outside my studio. I've got the window open. It just did it there. I don't know if you could hear it. But the other, I don't know, maybe a month ago, it was winter, so we had snow. And there was an owl out there hooting, which was really neat. Oh, I've got a blob like nobody's business. I'm going to offload some paint. I'm really laying the paint on here. So all I'm doing is just trying to bring some of the color on the sides over to the front. All right, hopefully this isn't too weird because I'm gonna look at the top. And it doesn't have to match perfectly, just I like to get some color on there. Some artists paint the sides of their canvas black. I just like carrying the image over. I just think it looks neat. Personal preference. This is going to dry darker. I'm going to add just a little more white. All right, I will be right back after I dry this with a hair dryer. You guys, I thought of something. So first thing I should mention, I just dipped my brush. Oh, look how messy that is. Can you hear me if I pull it? <laughs> I dipped my brush in a little bit of water uh, just to keep it moist. I have it sitting on a paper towel. And I'm gonna move my palette. So I don't worry about if my line, my paint, my horizon line is gonna be super straight, but some people like straight. So let's use, you could use masking tape, especially on these boards, they're pretty sturdy. Um, this is artist, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry guys. This is artist tape. It's a little more gentle, um, a little less sticky. And that has its benefits and its downsides. So put it on, and then that'll make it super easy to get a really straight line if you like that sort of thing. I'm gonna bend it over the sides a little. Actually, maybe I'll, uh, I'm gonna fold it so it'll be easier to grab. That's just a little, you don't have to do that, just a little thing I do. And then I'm gonna burnish it a little bit with the handle of my palette knife. Sorry for the wiggle, my art table wiggles. And then, so I've dried this for several minutes, so it's surface dry with a hair dryer. And we'll get our palette back in here. It's got paint on my finger. <laughs> Definitely a blow by blow here. Isn't this exciting? And then, let's see if we're on camera. And then that'll be a super easy way to get, I might add a little gray. And then you don't want to push the paint up too much. You kind of want to, well, I don't know if I need to pick it up. You kind of want to go this direction. I mean, don't sweat it too much because I'm going to go side by side because that's the direction I want the paint to go. But you don't want to work too much up in there because it will, it will go up and under the tape. But if it does, we'll just clean it up with the other color or some white. Not all is lost. Just a, oops, I need a little water. I need a, I got a very messy brush there. A little water. We don't want any clouds on there yet. I don't know if you could hear those sirens now. The Cardinal is much more pleasant than the sirens going out, going on outside my studio. Oh, the Cardinal's still there too, I just heard it. <laughs> okay, 
So now I'm gonna dry this with a hair dryer. Then I'm gonna clean my brush off too. And I'll be back. So I dried it with a hair dryer. And you can see as it dried, I've got a little, a couple little places where the canvas is popping through. Cause I think the paint shrinks up. I don't know for sure. Maybe Liquitex could tell us in the comments, but I think the paint shrinks up a little bit as it dries. But I'm not too worried about that just yet. We'll see if we need to worry about that down the road. And then I'm gonna peel this off and just kind of pull away from your line. Ooh, that's gonna be pretty darn clean. Isn't that nice? Oh, see it there? It went under a little bit, but that could just be something off in the distance. Um, the good old Bob Ross happy accidents. Now you could, this is dry enough, I could tape it so that maybe even a little bit of the blue shows and then we could paint the yellow, the basic part of the yellow grass. Uh, I'm not gonna do that, but you guys certainly could do that if you wanted to. All right, I'm gonna use the same brush. I washed it out and I put out the Naples yellow. I mixed a little burnt umber with it. I have some unbleached titanium and that's the burnt umber. I really don't know what I'm gonna need till I see it. <laughs> I know, really helpful. But um, I like to have a couple puddles and values. So we will have white, the Naples yellow, and then the darker. Just to see, just so I can see how it looks as we're painting it. And I might actually start, maybe I'll mix a little, uh, I don't like this palette knife. I got another palette knife I like better. It's not quite so long. Maybe we'll mix up some light Naples yellow. Okay, see there I didn't mix it very, like there I mixed it really well. Here I'm not so concerned. All right, let's grab a little white. And I think I'm gonna, it's easier to pull. I just don't know which direction I wanna pull. Light. Oops. Well, let's pull that down because I got a blob. Tell him thinking. Excuse me. So if I weren't painting this on camera. I would pick it up and get it. So I have uh, progressive lenses. I would get it in the right angle so I could see it. Anybody, hey, can anybody relate to uh, progressive lenses in their glasses? Leave a comment. I bet there's a few out there. I never did wear contacts. You can't get this wrong. I'm just trying to get some light color down. I think what I want to do, when that dries, I want to maybe glaze over a little yellow just to pull the yellow up into the sky so we don't have such a strong line. Although you see that, you see really blue sky is not quite so gray like I've got it. And a really strong horizon line sometimes. Okay, so I was talking about one point perspective I'm not sure how we're gonna paint this. Need a little water. Actually, I might turn it upside down. So I think we kind of want some lines, some brush strokes going. I grab a little water. Just grab some water. What if it's not? Now it's almost too much water. If it's not flowing like you want it to. Acrylics are really forgiving. I mean, you don't want a ton of water on a canvas. You can use all the water you want if you're painting on paper with acrylics. I think I'm just gonna put in some color. That might be too strong, but. Just see how this looks. So I'm kind of pointing towards the middle. 
middle-ish. I don't really like all that dark up there. So all I'm thinking is darker at the bottom, lighter, lighter. Oh, you know what? It should get a little grayer and lighter. I don't know if we can do that quick as we get towards the horizon line. Oh, all right, that wasn't the greatest idea. Let's finish this thought. Okay, and I might dry this. So drying it with a hair dryer is kind of like save, saving your file that you're working on on a computer. I think I've said that before in videos. I think I'm gonna do that so I can turn it around and hold it and look at it right side up. You know, I kinda of like that. Clean up my brush a little bit. I don't like that. Sometimes I get so much paint on my brush that it's harder to paint. Maybe we just put in I'm not sure what I want to do here. So I'm thinking maybe some straight up Naples yellow because it looks yellower, yellower when you paint it. against the more brownish Naples yellow burnt umber mix we use. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm trying to grab a little white. Does that kind of work? that works for now we're gonna have we'll paint the clouds next we'll have a tree in here probably a round fat one simple trunk stems and then we'll need a little we'll need a little shadow actually maybe I'll put I usually have the light coming from this direction just to keep it simple so maybe we'll paint some We could play and we could play. Should I say play one more time? We could play. I think we leave that alone. Oh, you know what I wanted to do? While I'm thinking of it, so I'm cleaning out my brush. So the whole idea of this is to let our brush strokes do the work, keep it simple take the pressure off and paint some clouds. So I'm getting out some matte medium. Just put a couple drops. I might, you know what, I might, I'm debating about getting a smaller brush. Get a brush that you're comfortable with. And this may be a bad idea. <laughs> Spoiler alert, this may be a bad idea. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my light, straight up Naples yellow and white mix at least half of matte medium. And I might, what I wanna do, is kinda pull, or glaze. Oh, I think, I don't know if it's gonna matter but glaze a little warmth up into my sky. Sort of, ah. Christina, I grabbed, grabbed something I didn't want for my palette and didn't notice. 
At least my tree's going there. Let's we'll see if we can kind of wash it off. So glad I saved as. I'm gonna grab a little paper towel. Oh, and I dropped my paper towel. Oh, look at that. No harm, no foul. So that's one thing I really love about doing these videos are unscripted, unplanned. You see how I handle things that I don't like. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this because I'm running out already. It's about half and half. Which may be too much, but you can always darken it up. I'm gonna grab just a smidge of water. Oh, I sang it, you like that smidge? Okay. You can tell I'm in a good mood today. And it's okay if it's a little streaky. We're gonna bring some of that warmth up into our sky area. And then we can even bring some of this color or this color into our clouds. So I think maybe we'll paint some clouds and then glaze. But sometimes that can make the difference between a beginner painting and that little extra tip of bringing the ground color up into the sky, tying, unifying the painting and bring it together. That can really help you. Okay, it's time for dinner. I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then we're gonna paint some clouds. It's the next day. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna turn this sideways in case you wanna take a screenshot. Try and get it <laughs> there. And then here, give you a closer look. Now you could just dry it really well with a hair dryer. It was just the end of the day for me. And there's where I glazed some of the yellow. All right, let's make some clouds. So I really had fun with this one. This was the first time. Oh, my cloud video. I want to show you guys. I'm going to take it off my... Here, I'll be right back. So here's... I painted some clouds. I did the best cloud. What did I call it? Something like the best cloud video ever. I can't remember. I had a fun, cute title. This is just on a piece of canvas. But I thought, I thought I'd show you that. That's what I'm referring to by the cloud video. And then for the first time, I used this brush and I used it for clouds. Hang on, I'm sticking this back up on my studio wall. So I wanna use this brush again. And we'll just use some, you can use, you, uh, check out that video. Cause you can use titanium white. Um, I used matte medium, you could use, so there's some titanium white. I don't know that we're gonna need much, but we'll might as well mix up some. And then that's matte medium. Um, you can use zinc white. You could use some water if you don't have any medium. Um, glass medium works, I just don't like the shiny. Here's the matte medium. I think I might put a little Put a drop. Because we want to go transparent and we can always go darker. Okay. And I think there's there's different ways to make clouds. You can make clouds with color. It doesn't have to be white. You know, it can be shades of blue gray that I've got going on here. I think we'll make white clouds and maybe glaze them like we did here. What else do I want to do? Oh, I'm looking for, so you can use chalk. You don't even have to do this step. Um, you could use color pencil or watercolor pencil, I should say. But so our tree's going to be somewhere in here. That might be a little off middle. If we want to measure it, we can get it right in the middle. But so we might want to have some clouds that kind of point to it because we're doing a one point perspective. I mean, not but literally, but we've got things going to one point, which is the tree. So I'm, I might, I'm gonna kind of maybe scribble in a triangle shaped cloud just so I don't forget. You know, you could have like a little cloud here. 
Of course, that might be behind our tree. That's why we're putting our, painting our clouds first in case they do end up behind our tree. And then maybe kind of a, something like that. Okay. Mostly that was for me, so when I talk, I don't forget what I'm doing. Now this is a really stiff, I just got it wet, a stiff Princeton brush. It says Princeton Select number six. But it's a really stiff, and then it's, it's kind of um, fuzzy, for lack of a better word. Whereas you can make clouds with something like this. This is a much softer brush. Um, I think a lot of people would like a filbert because it's already rounded. Maybe we'll leave that one out in case we want it. All right, so I'm getting my brush a little bit wet. I'm gonna grab, oh, so I'm not used to this brush. That actually may have been too wet. That's okay. Acrylics are really forgiving. So then you kind of want to put, I don't know if I mentioned this in my cloud video, but kind of maybe put or push where you want, yeah, that's too wet, um, the whiter whites to be. So I think we'll have the whiter whites over here. But this is sort of the first um, layer of clouds. Now I'm grabbing just a little bit of water. Oh, so that's too much water. I think it's good for you guys to see me make mistakes if you want to call them mistakes because sometimes you don't know how the brush is going to work. So I'm just grabbing a paper towel. Um, you know, you don't know. Let's just go slower here. You know, it's in how I saw how I fixed the problem, how I solved the problem. There we go. We're just going to let that be really thin because we've already got quite a bit of paint underneath. When I'm done, I'm going to put a gel gloss. I call it an isolation layer. Um, it would be an isolation layer if you use removable varnish. But I use the Liquitex permanent varnish. Um, so it's really not an isolation layer. But it adds some depth. Um, and it also seals everything together before I put the varnish on. Well, you know it might be kind of neat after I scrub some of this in. Take my finger and get get some wind going. That works too with the brush. Wipe some of that back. Oh, I like that. And I was wondering, I haven't had a chance to look online yet, but I was wondering, um, if you can get a six by eight frame, cause you could put it in a, a frame. Yeah, you know, I've got one, that one's sitting here. Although this is a watercolor. If you put in a frame, you don't want glass. It doesn't need the glass. And if it's close to the glass, it'll stick. But that could be kind of fun. Stick it in a frame. Give it as a gift. like a so all I'm doing is just getting some white down see if I kind of like the shapes trying to keep them random moving my hand more than more than painting because I don't know what I want to do but actually it's part of the fun I mean if it was super easy I don't know I suppose you'd do it but it's kind of like learning a language and learning a sport learning to play piano I'm a little afraid of that so I keep kind of wiping it with my finger oh I kind of like the wispies That's something nice about this brush is you, you kind of get some interesting inter 
interesting things that happen. Happy accidents. All right, what do we think? Is that pretty good? Oh, I kind of like that, so I kind of have... Well, it's darker than I want until I figure out what I'm gonna do. Okay, just go light, go slow till you figure out what you like. Oh, I had someone message me this morning that they did this in Photoshop. They just used different digital brushes in Photoshop and it's pretty much the same technique. And you have layers in Photoshop. We have layers in this painting. Um, that was really fun. I'm so happy they tried it. Well, and then they sent, you know, sent me some money for a cup of coffee for this video, which I really, really appreciate. That helps pay for the edits. Oh, and I'm saving money for a microphone. I've mentioned that before recently. All right, I probably should quit talking. That's awesome. If you're watching, thank you so much. That was super awesome. I really appreciate that. All right, let's stop here for a minute. Let's add some white whites, or maybe just another layer of our matte medium and titanium white. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. So my clouds are gonna be lighter up in here. Cause we're kinda, we're looking almost like down a tunnel. Oh, I should do a video on like different um, design structures for painting, structures for landscapes. Of course, if we get too white in here, we can come back with some light blue gray or something. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm not really liking that. I wanna keep, I wonder if that's too thin. I wanna keep a wider area. Maybe a little less scrubbing and a little more dabbing. And that, see how, do you see how that dried darker? It's much darker now. And it feels dry. So I'm offloading my brush a little bit. Put some of those wispies back in. turn it but since you guys are watching I try not to turn it as much all right let's put in a couple another you know we might need some littler clouds now let's do this first I get ahead of myself so are you guys like watercolor painters and you're interested in acrylic are you beginning painters I'd love to see or hear about what you make, what you do. Usually people who um, are interested in painting have other creative things that they do. I kind of like that. I, I said I should do that and then I didn't. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of paint on the end. I don't know if you can see it because it's a white bristle brush. There are lots of ways to do this. Oh, that pretty much disappeared. I think this video is also getting long. I try to keep them shorter so we can get them uploaded. You know, an hour video could take 
three hours to upload, four hours. Let's see, I kind of wanted that triangle shape. I don't know how strong I want it. Let's try a little soft scrubbing, real light touch. Not a lot of paint. It's not much of a triangle, but you get what I'm talking about. It kind of points. cloud and then we can come back. That one looks pretty good already. Well, maybe we want... So drawing, painting are about values. So we know that's looking even darker as we get more white on top of it, um, and shapes. So even though it's not a triangle, I'm still kind of thinking triangle there. That can really help you. You know, you can break. Um, I think we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do a tomato. How to? You know, I'm gonna do some drawing tip videos, and we'll draw a simple tomato. And you can kind of think about shapes on it. Helps you see a little bit better. or not. <laughs> um, you can print out, if you don't like my clouds, by all means print out some clouds that you like. I wonder if we want to be kind of done. There, It can get to where you, or I, I should say, I overpaint. You know, because it kind of gets to be fun and relaxing too. Just dabbing color on. favorite daughter's putting some music as I think here because I'm not talking as much. I don't know where my our tree's going to be. Maybe we need some um, I think we might call that good. It's not my brush. This also lets you know, even though this is a simple painting, a simple landscape, um, I think it's a good one if you're a beginner to take on, rather one that has got trees and, you know, a fence and rocks and water and, you know, start with something easier. I'm going to show you the clouds here. So when you get close, you can see much more of the texture. Um, I forgot what I was saying before I got sidetracked there. It'll come back to me. All right. Um, I wonder if we want to put in. So we could go darker blue, but I wonder if it wouldn't look better. Is that still wet? Oh, that's still kind of wet. Grab a little of our matte medium, a little bit of our white and Naples yellow. Now, this brush was dry. I didn't get it wet first. We'll see. See how dry that is. Maybe. Oh, 
Oh, I could have used the other brush. No need to switch. Oh, see, it's kind of picking up. Can you see that I'm picking up the paint? So I'm gonna dry this better with a hair dryer. Be right back. Okay, let's see if that's dry enough. I'm gonna go back to this brush. Just cause I, I just picked up the other brush cause I wasn't even looking. in so we get kind of have a bullseye right there so I want to get rid of that bullseye that I made because your eye will definitely go to it this may turn out to be a better cloud anyway layers oh it's not coming right there layers help actually I wonder if we want some more layers because I like that what do you guys think this just ends up being personal preference after a bit. You know, how light, how dark, or how bright, how white and bright, and how often to the background do you like your clouds? Oh, it's so hard to be random. that points girl we're trying to keep the viewers eye in the painting and entertain them so these different textures are different definitely entertaining not sure I've got any paint coming off Good. I might fill that in just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna dry that before we glaze. Ooh, I'm looking through my phone camera and I'm liking that. It looks like a neat summer day or fall day, depending on what you see this as. Um, this may become a long video because I'm gonna keep adding details. You know what? Oh, sorry, I just banged my side table there. I'm gonna use, keep using this brush. It's too bad you're not here with me, like, you know, say, hey, no, use the filbert. <laughs> but really, use, use whatever brush you're comfortable with. Okay, we're gonna glaze. And I like that. Okay, you can see a little yellow still in that one. So I think I'm gonna keep the yellow I don't know where our tree's gonna go. I've said that a few times. Probably need to get that in pretty soon. I'm gonna keep our yellow maybe more towards this way. I'm not sure if that matters. I'm gonna grab a little and grab a little matte medium. Hold up my brush a little bit more. Should we get, get tricky and add a little stronger yellow? This is a simple painting. You can see them go go slow. Take your time. Um, you won't know that you're learning something with every painting, but I learned something with every painting. And then you go back and go, oh, you know, like I painted a bunch of bumblebee paintings, and I go, and I go, oh, I really like bees this way, or I really, I I learned pretty quickly that I like bees with white backsides. I think those are so cute. The big chubby ones with the white. Sorry, I'm thinking. I think 
You might just call that good. Get the, dry it and get the, oh here we could, uh, put just a little, little swoosh of yellow. Oh, there's a bigger swoosh. Okay, I'm gonna dry it and we'll get the tree in. I think I mentioned this, but um, if you don't like how your clouds turn out or you paint too much white, you can mix some of your lighter, some of your blues with some white and you can put some of the blue back in. Here, let me um, take a little white, a little bit, that's a little bit grayer blue. And then this is just, I think it used to be a tiny filbert that's just beat up. See how I, well that's kind of dark. Oh, I'm gonna put so much dark right there. Oh, see, that's about the right, the same color you can't even tell. Oh, now you can tell I'm putting a little in there. You can go back and add some blues. I'm just kind of dry brushing, scumbling. Okay, I just wanted to show you that. Okay, our tree. We're basically gonna do a, ch a fat round, I was gonna say chubby tree. I think it might be kind of fun. Here, should we see where center is? Oh, I wasn't too far off with my dot. Center is just to the right of my brown dot there. All right, am I still on camera? I wonder if we, I don't know if this is gonna show, maybe we'll do it. Well, I'm not a big fan of pencil, but to what I have handy, I don't see my black charcoal pencil. What if we have it lean just a little bit? And then... Something like that. This is a kneaded eraser. Oh, sorry. I just hit my, uh, <laughs> my video arm because it slipped. I'm gonna lighten it just because it makes me nervous. Just in case some of that pencil is gonna end up showing. Because I can't wash the pencil off, especially. Okay. I don't know if you can still see that. But you saw where I drew it. All right, and now I might take Round, little round brush. Oh, it's all worn off of it. Might be a two, might be a one. I'm just gonna grab a little gray, a little burnt umber. see it but let's give it a smidge of a base maybe even want a skinnier brush and I don't know if any of this is gonna show I just let that dry this is where we dry a lot and get down to some of the details or when we wait for that to dry we could Take some of our Naples yellow with some burnt umber mixture and lighten it up. But there could even be maybe just a hint. Oh, that might be too light. Or I just didn't want to come off my beat up brush. 
I'm gonna turn it so I get a little bit better angle. Sort of like a little hint of something off in the distance that's darker, even though it's far away. I look at that brush. Not sure I like that. I'm lighting it up. I was gonna smear it and I decided not to. lighter paint and I'm gonna just add some interest is all I'm doing this is just like clouds too you kind of kind of want to stop I may have too much already but then if you don't like it I'll have to come back and change it up a little bit lighten it up. I mean really something like that. Get a little stronger. It could be a building. Actually I think I want Trying to grab a little bit of paint. I want kind of a dot there. Okay, you suppose our tree trunk is dry enough? All right, I'm gonna get out some Hooker's Green. You know, during the pandemic, I've been buying more of the basics instead of the heavy body. And I believe, I believe I read, I should probably check, on uh, Liquitex website that the heavy body is more heavily pigmented, but boy, I have a hard time telling. And then you can use straight up green if you want, but I'm gonna mix a brown green. That almost looks brown. We don't want our, our tree to be a complete oval. So this brush would work well. You could use the same brush. Um, a Deerfoot stippler, if you have a little one, could work well. You know, use whatever you have. You can do it with any brush, really. I kind of like um, uh, using old, you now it's got a hair hanging out. Um, old worn out brushes because they'll give you some happy accident kind of things going on. All right, let's pay attention so I don't get too crazy here. Kind of turn it, Oop. change your angle. Especially if paint doesn't come off, might as well turn it. Well, another thing that you can do, oh, I kind of like that it's got a, okay. What I was gonna say is you can put sky holes back in. I think we'll um, paint the tree and then I'll show you the sky holes. So I added some white. 
Oh, actually add some yellow. It'll warm it up and lighten it up. I don't know if that's too much. I'll make another scribble there. Okay, our light's coming. right with the first time I'll add a few of those in there so a lot of times artists don't know if they've mixed just the right color until they try it and then they make you just make adjustments you keep making decisions and making decisions and if you don't like a decision you can change it you can dry it I had a little yellow and a little white. Hopefully, hopefully that was on camera. There we go. I'm gonna add just a little white and see what it does. You wouldn't normally see that, but I kind of want it to have some depth. Oh, I like that. I think maybe we should just stop here. Screenshot time. We need to maybe put a little depth in the tree trunk. I'm not sure I like that there's such an even Y there. I'm grabbing, I grabbed a little bit of the medium green. Bring that down just a bit more. I'm gonna dry this because I like the tree and I don't want to lose it. Okay, I found a number one round, Simply Simmons, because I wanna, that other brush wasn't, oh, this brush, it's getting worn and see how it won't hold its shape. I wasn't liking it. And then I'm wondering if we want a little bit Her trunk. I think I like that better. And then we're going to add a shadow and we could just use the brown. Um, I'm almost tempted to add some gray to it. I don't know that it matters. Maybe, I haven't even used the unbleached titanium. That may be too light. Let's see. So shadow's gonna be over here. I'm gonna grab a little, kind of almost rinse off my brush and grab just a, a little bit of water. And I'm gonna lose that. Okay, we can let it dry and try again. And I pretty much lost it. I'm just trying to dab it in. Yeah, that might be pretty good. Can that be? Let it dry. Now, do we need a little white highlight on part of these branches or do we need to go dark or both? So I'm just adding little teeny horizontal strokes. I kind of like that the tree leans a little. You can make yours straight up. dark too. We could add, we, this will look black, the Prussian blue. Maybe we'll do that. I was going to say you could use your burnt umber or you can put out some black paint. Oh, 
how to paint a teeny tiny tree. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty good. Just cleaning out my brush. Are we done? I kind of want to play, and I probably shouldn't. Have it lean a little bit more. Okay, are we done, guys? We could put some little clouds, now that we know how little, we could make your tree bigger. You can make it a lot bigger. I really went small. Um, we could, I'm washing out my brush. We could go back to our mixing white and white, white. I'm a little nervous. Of course, I can probably wipe it off because it's pretty dry. Add a little hint of cloud down there. I think we better stop. Okay, let me know what you think of this. Let me know if it's helpful. I think this might be the best beginning landscape video for beginner painters. Um, you get to practice clouds. Here, I'm gonna turn it sideways. If you wanna take a screenshot to paint from, try to get it square, maybe there. Um, I really appreciate the comments on YouTube and Facebook. Um, it just means so much to me. I can't believe it. There's so many nice people out there. Great big happy art hugs. I hope to chat with you guys soon. Bye.